die, Delta Pi. Slash your motherfuckers and get knocked. What's up everybody? Welcome to day 5 here on the 31 Days of Horror. I am your host Mood616 and thank you once again for stopping in guys. Yeah, day 5 is here and I got another one here, another independent horror film. Uh, this one was released by, I think it's like independent, I think you can buy this one on the Sleazebox website. Um, and which brings me to actually who directed this film, Sean Donahue and Chris Leto. Uh, Chris, or Sean Donahue actually directed um, Joe Vampire, which was also released by the Sleaze Box, and um, most recently Discord House it was also directed by uh, um, Sean Donahue. So, yeah, if you're a fan of the Sleaze Box, you might be a fan of this one too. Uh, this one right here is from 2013, released in 2014, and it's called Die Die Delta Pi. So with a title like that, you pretty much know what you're getting yourself into. Yes, it is a sorority house type slasher film. And yeah, and it starts out uh, basically as a kind of a throwback. It starts out in 1986 and it tells like the, you know, the whole backstory of what happens to this, this sorority. It's basically about um, this sorority Delta Pi um, and a bunch of really bitchy sorority house girls. Anyways, <laughs> they decide to... Uh, they decide to pull a prank on one of their own. Uh, it's basically a girl that they think that, well, they're pretty much jealous of. You know, she's really hot, she's smart, she has a lot of things going for her. The rest of the girls in the sorority just can't stand her, so they take her out to this beach one night. There's a bunch of the guys from the, you know, the guys' um, fraternity and stuff there, too. Anyways, they start pulling pranks on her. It goes completely wrong, and she ends up getting burnt to death. Well, as soon as she gets burnt to death, like, out of the blue and like almost simultaneously, uh, some s random slasher just basically takes out all the fraternity, all the sorority house. Um, so there's dead bodies everywhere, guys, girls, and uh, yeah, and the, the killer just appears. They never find the body of the of the sorority girl that was burned to death, and yeah, then it jumps to the present day. It's very odd too because the credits don't start rolling until about 15 minutes into the film. And then it jumps to the present day where it follows a group of new girls from Delta Pi who have reopened up the sorority, uh, the sorority house after, you know, 27 years because they feel it's about time that they do that. And uh, so now they're gathering up girls to join their, uh, their sorority. And, you know, it also introduces some of the characters from the past, uh, from the past sorority house too. You know, now they're old. One of them's like really insane and stuff from the events of that night. And it kind of follows these characters, but now, of course, there's a killer on the loose again, and they're taking out not only the new fraternity girls, but now they're after the the older ones also. Um, and yeah, that's basically the uh, the story of the film right there. Now, my thoughts on this one: uh, Delta or Die Die Delta Pi. I like the name of it, you know. It's it, and even this cover art's fantastic too. It has a very kind of throwback feel to it. Uh, like I said, it starts in 1986 and does have kind of that 80s feel. It has the music and, you know, it, it's kind of like over the top a little bit with the 80s looking stuff, but it's only the first 15 minutes of the film. But, but yeah, my thoughts on this one, um, it's, it's a pretty decent film, actually, I have to say. Uh, you know, it doesn't really bring anything new to the genre. It's a very kind of, you know, straight up story. Um, and yeah, it doesn't really offer too much more, but it's a slasher film. We watch these slasher films for the kills and the girls, and, you know, the nudity and stuff, which it does have, you know, it's got hot girls in it, it's got some nudity, um, you know, th this movie right here suffers from a very, some awkward moments, though, you know, it's very, you know, kind of your standard type slasher film, but there's scenes in this film where, you know, there's people sitting around talking and stuff, and it feels awkward, it doesn't feel natural, and, you know, when you get those scenes where the dialogue just doesn't feel natural, and it's, you know, it's not edited as well as it could be. It just feels kind of awkward when you watch it. And, and this one has scenes like that, um, which is explainable. It's a very, very low bu budget type film. So um, you're probably going to get those type of moments in this one. So um, which leads me into the acting. The acting is like not the worst in the world. It's not the greatest either. I've seen worse. I've seen better. Uh, some of the characters in this film are pretty much your your general cliche type characters, uh, but they're not the most unlikable characters either. You do actually like some of these characters in the film, which is always a bonus with a slasher film. Um, like I always say, if you hate all the characters in the film, it just makes it so unenjoyable to watch. But uh, this one does have some decent characters and stuff. Acting's decent, you know. Music's actually pretty good in this film too. Um, 
but it does suffer from pretty bad dialogue and awkward moments and stuff. Uh, I think the biggest plus of this film is actually the effects in the film. It doesn't have a lot of kills. It doesn't have like an abundance of kills. Uh, but when they do happen, they're pretty gory and stuff. The effects are done by Marcus Koch. Uh, from We all know Marcus Koch. He directed 100 Tears and Rot. And he's worked on tons and tons of films as a special effects artist and, you know, supervisor and stuff. Uh, you know, just, I don't even want to get into the films that he's done. But Marcus Koch, we all know him. He's a great effects artist. So, you know, the effects in this one are quite bloody, which you know, is awesome, and it's all practical, so that's what we want to see in these low-budget type slasher films. So it has some good things, and it has some bad things going on. Like I said, the biggest thing, it doesn't really bring anything new to the genre. It's still entertaining enough, and it's very short. It only runs about just under 80 minutes, like 75 minutes long. So, again, it doesn't overstate its welcome either. Uh, and, of course, this one does have a twist ending also. You know, these slasher films, <laughs> it seems a lot of the times they have to have these type of twists and stuff. I don't know if it fully works. I think it's a little predictable at times, too, actually, um, you know, for this one. But it is what it is. Die, Die, Delta Pi. Not a bad film. Nothing that great. If I had to rate this one, I'm probably going to give it just a 6 out of 10. Um, I enjoyed it. You know, if you're a hardcore slasher fan, you'll probably really enjoy this. It's, you know, I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot better this year also, too. Um, there's been some really good slasher films, but give this one a shot. Like I said, good throwback cover arts. You know, it's it's got some pretty, you know, it's got some pretty decent moments in the film. It's not, like, overly comedic, but there is some funny parts, which I do enjoy. I, I One thing about these low-budget slasher films I can't stand is when they try to be overly comedic, like, all the time, and, and it just comes off as super bad and cheesy, but... It doesn't really try to do that a lot, but, you know, it has its moments, so. Again, Die, Die, Delta Pi, check it out, yeah, and, yeah, got this one signed up from the director, Wasteland right there, pretty cool stuff, so. I'm rambling on, this is gonna do it for uh, day five here. See you guys tomorrow on day six, peace out, homies.